You probably have been told that skiing in difficult snow conditions like heavy powder or crud might require some special technique or gear. But what if I told you that is absolutely not true? You can ski in almost any kind of snow conditions with regular skis using the exact same technique you would on a regular groomer. The original title for this video was How to Ski Crud. But during the making it became clear it's not only about how to ski crud. It's actually about how to ski. So in this video I am going to do just that. I will teach you how. Hi, I'm Tom from TDK Ski Racing, combining ski instruction with race coaching here to help you become a better skier. Many of you can probably identify yourself with a woman here. You can ski pretty well on a regular groomer, but as soon as you go slightly off-piste, you find yourself in a heap of trouble. Note that you don't even have to go off-piste to run into bad snow conditions. Heavy snowfall, strong winds, a lot of skiers tracking back and forth can turn any groomer into a battlefield of bumps and crud. So, what exactly is crud? If you Google crud, you will come up with something like this. Crud is a byproduct of skiers tracking out ungroomed powder, leaving behind an uneven mix of soft and hard snow blended with bumps and patches of ice. Also, different types of windblown crust hard pack and spring slush can also be considered as crud. Basically anything outside a nice smooth freshly groomed slope or perfect powder conditions can be considered as crud. Back to the video. Eventually she makes it down in one piece, but it wasn't a smooth pleasant ride. Skis behave quite differently in non-groomed terrain, especially crud. They sink through the surface into the snow and cannot be pivoted or brushed sideways like you are used to on a groomer. You also cannot make wedge turns or even slide sideways down the slope. A few things stand out. She has an overly wide stance. She's hanging on the tails of her skis. She's skiing very slowly and she is pretty much standing with equal weight on both skis the whole time. That is not proper ski technique or how you should be skiing in conditions like this. So what is proper ski technique? Let's start off by saying a few words about carving. Carving is a high-speed ski technique great for wide open and well-prepared groomers. You need a smooth and solid base to carve your turns, while in office conditions there is no hard firm base to dig your edges into for good grip. So carving is not a valid technique for skiing crud. Instead, you should be using brushed parallel turns with up unweighted turn initiations. Before the turn, you move your center of mass up to take the weight off away from underneath the skis to easily pivot your skis into the new turn. You can do this at various rates. On a flat, smooth groomer, only a small decrease in pressure is sufficient, while in more demanding situations you need to take more pressure off from underneath your skis. So, on a flat groomer you only need to use a very small up movement, while in crud you sometimes need okay. to jump completely up off the snow. 
The reason we want to decrease pressure underneath our skis is so that it is easier to pivot our skis onto their new edges with a new brush angle. This is a very useful technique in all situations. In the old days of straight skis, this is how everyone skied. Everyone that knew, anyway. Let's take a closer look at up unweighting. The classic way would be to flex your legs throughout the turn in order to extend your legs into the transition. However, this is, in my opinion, unnecessary with modern short skis, and I teach only a very subtle down and up move at the end of the turn coming into the transition. I don't like the classic style of flexing throughout the turn, as when we carve, we should be doing the exact opposite. We should extend our legs into the turn and flex throughout the transition. Same in bumps. You flex and extend your legs to absorb bumps and not initiate turns. This is important. In wedge turns, you only need to shift your weight horizontally from one ski to the other to turn. In carving, you only need to tip your skis on edge to turn. No up and weighting is needed. However, in basic brushed parallel turns, you need to up and weight. Note. We do not always need to extend our legs in order to move our center of mass up to up and weight. Instead, we can use piles of snow and bumps to do the job for us, or actually a combination of both. This is why we need to scout for the best places to turn, and just like in bumps, we need to make use of all terrain features we can find. When you ski like this, you save energy and your skiing becomes smooth and effortless, resulting in more enjoyable and safe skiing. Here is a run down an ungroomed ski route with a bit of bumps and soft snow. Notice how I, at the beginning of the clip, where it is not very steep and the surface is smooth and even, keep my skis on the snow at the turn initiation. But as the slope becomes steeper and bumpier, I make use of a stronger up movement. A combination of skiing over bumps and extending my legs. It is all a matter of choosing where to turn and when to flex and extend. Timing is everything. Notice how I go across the slope in order to check my speed and find good places to turn. The more air I get underneath my skis, the more control I add to my skiing. Because when I am up in the air, I clear the skis from any crud element threatening to mess with my balance. When I land back again with my skis slightly brushing, I use the added momentum to forcefully plow into and through any snow ahead. Also, I always try to make my turns where the snow is soft. This is a great clip from a ski route in Sant Anton back in 2009. A beautiful day, but nobody else to be seen. The reason is, of course, crud. From this camera angle, it is easy to spot how I use my forward and down momentum to crash through the snow. As I get airborne, I do not pivot my skis a lot. I more or less land in the same direction I was skiing before the jump. The idea is not to try to crank my skis around and into the fall line as fast as I can but to initiate a brushing angle and let the skis do their work. Play the elements against each other and enjoy the ride. That's all, folks. I hope you have enjoyed 
this lesson and please subscribe and share and give me thumbs up if you found this video useful or at least a bit entertaining. Also, please leave a comment in the commentary section below. I will personally read every comment and answer any questions you have. Or send me a clip of your skiing to tdk.skiracing at gmail.com for personal motion analysis or simply just for fun. I love all the ski clips you guys send me and all those crazy stories you tell me. Stay tuned for more videos in the near future. Ski safely and see you out on the crust. Woo! Come on, let's go.